Welcome back. This is the first in what I hope to be a continuing series on precision marksmanship. And I emphasize the word precision. Uh, it's, you know, firearms should only be regarded as being uh, potentially precise uh, shooting instruments. And we've unfortunately got into uh, the habit in this country, I think, of thinking of firearms as being um, multiple uh, shot instruments, just how many shots we can get off in a given period of time. And we talk a little bit too much about MOA, a little bit too much about, uh, you know, barrel bedding and, and all these different accuracy uh, enhancement things, while we're never talking about the uh, capability of the shooter that is actually uh, needed under a shoulder arm or a handgun to affect that potential for accuracy. I'm not here to uh, promote any particular uh, brand of firearm or any products or anything like that. I'm not going to be giving you any uh, salty language. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be here with a, you know, a marine gunny hat on or a, a steel pot or a, a cowboy hat or giving you any airs. Uh, what I'm here to do is to uh, hopefully inculcate some understanding about um, how to shoot. I want to uh, inspire America to be better in uh, what it naturally should be the best at. Uh, we are a nation of uh, Second Amendment right holders. There is no other country in the entire planet that has the right to keep and bear arms. Uh, by a law-abiding law citizen. And what we have, unfortunately, is the real, the real unfortunate uh, statistic is that whenever we enter into some sort of world-class uh, competition, we, we always end up being beaten. Uh, you know, we can maybe pull up a gold medal every now and then, but, you know, we should be, for a country that has uh, a gun behind every closet door uh, and, 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 you know, and a safe in every uh, in every three houses uh, down the street, you know, you, you just would assume that we would be the best at it, but we're not. Uh, and we need to turn that corner and get back to being uh, good shooters. And, <clears throat> you know, to be a good shooter is not a difficult thing. One of the most important things to remember is that it's not at all based upon uh, buying cases of ammo at a time. We don't, have to, we don't have to become a good shooter by simply, uh, you know, wailing away at, uh, you know, ghoul targets at, you know, 25 or 30 yards away, uh, you know, with, with cases of ammo. That's not going to gain uh, anything in terms of uh, accuracy and marksmanship. Uh, I've been teaching this uh, sort of thing now for uh, the better part of uh, 40 years. Actually, it, it, it goes back to 40 years. I first uh, taught guys, uh, you know, with the 45 uh, down at Fort Polk in 1969. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about a long time here that I've been uh, translating what I know about shooting uh, to other people so that they can become good shots. And I was blessed uh, by God to be a, a, a very proficient shot myself. I learned, I learned from my father who was a, a proficient shot and, uh, but my you know, and I got my trophies, I, I, I competed and I won, but my real joy was teaching others to be uh, good shooters and imparting my knowledge to others. You know, for me to, for me to just simply take my uh, trophies and, and put them up on a wall, uh, you know, that gains, that gains nothing in the long run. Uh, you know, a, a good coach uh, teaches you know, others to be, uh, in many cases, better than what he is himself. So let's start by uh, learning uh, how to become uh, a precision marksman. And don't exclude yourself simply because, you know, for any reason. Uh, I have taught uh, all, all, cl all classes of shooters uh, all my life. Uh, you know, men, women, children, it doesn't make any difference. They can all learn to shoot. I have yet to I have yet to come across anybody that can't learn. Um, I've I've come across uh, proud individuals who won't learn. Um, it was not uncommon for me when I opened up a new classroom of students when I had a, a bunch of recruits in front of me, whether it was 
uh, eight or ten or twelve new recruits in front of me at the department. Um, within about you know five minutes after I asked them to explain uh, what they knew about shooting, within five minutes I knew who I was going to have uh, problems with. Uh, usually it was the it was the one who had you know all kinds of experience about guns and threw around brand names and and uh, you know model names or maybe he was asked me hey, is this a that, that must be a you know model 629 so yeah well you know all these things fed into it and I knew that this was a guy who was probably going to be playing catch-up ball about the second or third week into it trying to figure out why he's falling behind the neophyte who had never touched a gun before so a lot of it you know you got to to learn something you sometimes have to be uh, humble enough uh, to cast aside what you think you know and then start again, build with a new uh, set of building blocks. And if you can start out that way, uh, you know, with this, with this understanding that in, if, you, if, you've, if you've reached a certain plateau and nothing seems to be getting any better, it's time to break down things and start again. Start from scratch, you know, and and build on that, and uh, you know you can you can really get someplace in a hurry. If you've got previous experience with a firearm, you know that means that you have at least some you you get some tools to work with. But you may have also acquired some bad habits, or maybe you learned some things that were not exactly uh, the best. So anyway, the first thing that we're going to talk about is uh, sight mechanics. Sight mechanics. And I've checked all these uh, guns that I bring into play here. Sight mechanics is uh, simply understanding the relationship of the front and the rear sight. The front sight being uh, the muzzle end, and this is your rear sight. And you know, generically, I call them iron sights. Uh, it doesn't make any difference whether they're made of iron or steel or plastic or aluminum. It doesn't make any difference. They're still iron sights. That's the generic term. Uh, but when we're talking about precision shooting, it's understanding the relationship between the front and the rear sight. We're not going to be talking about sighting the gun in. You know, very frequently I watch somebody, you know, shooting down at the at, at the uh, sporting club, and um, he can't hit anything. Uh, so he takes out his he takes out his screwdriver or he borrows one from me and he turns the, the knob a couple of times on the top of his uh, you know rear sight uh, and he, he still can't hit anything and he he readjusts things and then he asks his buddy if he thinks that it can be adjusted more and his buddy says no 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 you you know let me try it and then he shoots it and they turn a little bit more and everybody's all over the place trying to make it the fault of the adjustment on the rear sight the adjustment on the rear sight is the last. Uh, consideration. Um, if I if I screwed these sights all the way up or all the way down, uh, it, I would still have uh, a tight group. Um, you know, you have to understand <laughs> when you watch when you watch somebody who's got a who's got a 10 inch group at 50 feet when he can't hit the paper at 50 feet. It's not his sights. Uh, it's it's him. And you know, once we get him shooting correctly, you know, then we'll we'll deal with we'll deal with the um, uh, sight the the, the uh, adjustments. So anyway, going back to uh, sight mechanics, I'm going to drop this slide here. Everything has been checked out, as I say. So the the distance between the front and the rear sight is called sight radius. Why it's called sight radius, I've never really asked that question. I just take it for what it is, but that's the that's the term for it is sight radius. I don't see any circles involved here with a with a center, but it's it's just the same. It's called a sight radius. That's the distance between the front and the rear sight. Um, measuring with this gun, I've got nine and a half inch sight radius. That's the actual distance between the rear blade and the front. What does that mean to me? Well, at whatever distance I'm shooting, I apply the error within that within that distance, within that sight radius. That error is multiplied times the number of times that sight radius fits into my distance. So let's say I'll take my, my trusty carpenter's calculator, which I can calculate inches, uh, feet, and yards, 
and we'll go to a 50 yard range, a 50 foot range rather. Everybody should start out with a handgun at a 50 foot range. Everybody should start out with a rifle at a 50 foot range. It makes, it makes no sense whatsoever to, you know, line up on a target way out yonder uh, and, and not be able to hit it. Not, and, and the problem is, is that, you know, when you're, when you're foot off target, you can't, you can't establish anything. You can't establish what it is that you're doing. You need to have holes in a paper so that you can get a record of what you're doing so you can fix it and so you can work on it. So whether you're a, a, a brand new, you know, everybody years ago used to start out, you know, if you were a ROTC, uh, you know, Canada or something, they, they started you out at the, at the armory at a 50 foot uh, indoor rifle range and that's where you shot. You took a 22, you took a Remington, uh, you know, 22 or something like that and you fired a 50 foot NRA bullseyes with that with that rifle until you became competent and then once you became competent then you went outside and you shot at more distant targets. If you were, if you were at Boy Scout camp, uh, they lined you up you know, you know, shooting it prone at 50 feet, and then once everybody began uh, began to hit what they uh, were supposed to hit, maybe they moved the targets out a little bit farther. But 50 feet is the classic distance to start learning. Get the get the shots on paper so you can see what you're doing. Get a record on paper of how big your group is and where you you know. I'll when we start talking about uh, analyzing targets. Then I'll start showing you how you can actually use what you see with the bullet holes on the paper and how that can tell you a story about, uh, you know, how to fix your problem. Uh, if you, you know, if you buy a lawnmower or if you buy a computer and you're having problems with it, you turn to the back pages and it has the troubleshooting section. The target is your troubleshooting section. I can, uh, I will teach you in later segments how to use the target to troubleshoot your problem, to, to determine how your, uh, what your error is and how it is that you are, uh, you know, causing uh, issues. So anyway, if I start out with a 50 foot target, so we'll take 50 feet and then divide it by 9.5 inches. That gives me, that gives me the ratio 50 feet divided by 9.5 inches, it divides into it 63 times, a little over 63 times. Now that's, you know, if, if I were a plumber putting up a soil pipe under a house, uh, that's, that's called the slope factor, that's called the, you know, the waste, the waste pipe, the soil pipe under a house, uh, you know, it maybe uh, got a slope factor of an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch of run uh, per foot, per foot. So my slope factor is 9.5 inches. So I take 9.5 inches times 50 feet. I should say, I'm sorry. We'll take start over again. 50 feet divided by 9.5 inches, and then I multiply that times my potential error. Say I, my error. These the the rear groove on this handgun is roughly a tenth of an inch wide, so if I have just a, an error of a tenth of an inch wide times 0.1 inch, so I have now 6.3 inches from the center of aim. That's, that's my potential for error if I'm, only, if I'm only off by a tenth of an inch. In other words, if this bead, this front blade gets a tenth of an inch off. In other words, it's, it's on the edge of the rear groove or maybe it pops up a little high or a little low by a tenth of an inch. My, my potential for error at only 50 feet is six inches. That's exactly about the amount that I generally see when I watch a, uh, a beginning shooter uh, who hasn't had any instruction and doesn't understand the relationship of the front and rear sight. More often than not, he's endeavoring to place the bead right on the bullseye. He's holding that bead right on the bullseye just as tight as he can possibly hold it, maybe with two hands. He's got it right on there and that bead isn't moving. And he squeezes that trigger and the shot goes wide and he misses the paper. And then he asks me uh, what it is that he can do to uh, fix that. 
The problem is within the distance between the front and the rear sight. That, that critical distance by being off a tenth of an inch translates to six inches of error down at 50 feet. Compound that times uh, for a hundred yards uh, and you can see the, the potential for error. Um, let's go to a rifle now and I'm using my I'm using my Mini 14 because it shows up better on film and I'm not banging up the stock on my nice uh, walnut stocked guns. But the sight radius on this gun is 23 inches. So does that mean that I'm going to be more accurate at 50 feet with the same degree of error? Sure, substantially. But now, uh, if I take 50 feet times uh, or divided by 23 inches, and that I got, I've got uh, it's 26 times that that sight radius will fit into 50 feet. Okay, so it is, it is a, it is a much better ratio. But I'll multiply that times the same degree of error of a tenth of an inch times 0.1 equals 2.6 inches times 2. Remember this, the degree of error is from the center of the target to the outside limit. So that's 2.6 inches. That's times 2. That's 5 inches of over 5 inches of group size at 50 feet. I don't think many squirrels are going to be too worried about the guy who's shooting at him if that's all he can do is is at 50 feet. 50 feet is halfway up into a tree. Now, that's, that's a typical distance. So a person who's uh, not able to shoot into anything better than uh, 2.6 inches of error or 5 inch group size at 50 feet isn't going to do much for bringing home the uh, squirrels at the end of the day. You have to understand that this is, this is the critical part. That sight radius, keeping the, keeping the front blade properly and precisely aligned with the rear blade or the rear peep sight or whatever the case might be, but keeping those two perfectly aligned is everything. That's the whole name of the game. And I want you to take this home and put it in the bank. Everything hinges on this. Everything that I will talk about from here on hinges on this one little factoid. The only time the sight alignment means a thing is when the bullet has just left the barrel. That's the only time it means a thing. When that bullet has left the barrel, that's when all chips are on the table. It doesn't make any difference whether you line up your sights and then squeeze the trigger. You can't line up your sights and squeeze the trigger. You've got to have the sights lined up at the end of the trigger pull at the end of the follow-through, at the end of the end, when that bullet comes out of the barrel. That's the only time it matters. And if, if, that, if that can just sink into you, and if that can just become part of your entire understanding about marksmanship, then you'll end up being a precise marksman. Because in order to do that, you've got to have the sight mechanics have got to be absolutely precise. A tenth of an inch isn't much as I showed you. A tenth of an inch is a very small amount. But multiplied by, the, by this distance, the sight radius, all the way down to the target, uh, it, it turns into an extreme amount. Um, is, a, is a handgun less accurate than a rifle? Not in the, not in the least. Uh, this barrel has got as much accuracy as any long barrel. It, it, the accuracy has nothing to do with the length of the barrel. The accuracy has to do with the way the barrel is aligned to the target. There are other factors that come into play with regard to, uh, you know, rifle accuracy versus handgun accuracy. Most of it has to do with bullet construction and ammunition, uh, you know, quality. But uh, what I'm driving at and what you need to remember is that keeping the front and the rear sight precisely aligned at the instant the barrel, the, the uh, barrel lets go of that bullet, that's the only thing that matters. Everything else, everything else is downhill from there. So as we talk about now, sight picture, how to, you know, what the, what the correct sight picture is and what you should be seeing with regard to the front and the rear sight later on, that, that will factor into it and then we'll, we'll be talking certainly about uh, trigger squeeze and breath control and body position and all the other things. But uh, just I'm trying to keep these uh, segments small enough so that uh, you can absorb one thing at a time. 
until we meet again, um, I hope you shoot well, but most importantly, uh, try to shoot the very best you can for every single shot that you fire. Take care, and God bless.